Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a complex trigonometric equation. Not a very complex equation but we're going to be finding a complex answer. We have sine z equals 2i and we're basically looking for an angle whose sine is 2i but 2i is imaginary. If you were given an equation like let's say 2 sine of z is 1 half then the result would be fairly straightforward, right? You would immediately, I mean, you could even do just guess and check. But with the case of imaginary numbers, how do you do that? So we're going to be using an interesting formula for this problem. Thanks to Euler, we do have a form called the polar form of a complex number. And also we have uh, an identity, again from Euler, which kind of brings us the most beautiful equation. I'm, I'm planning to make a video on the most beautiful equation one day, maybe Monday, who knows when. Let's see. So we have sine of z equals 2i, and we could probably say something like, okay, z is equal to the arc sine of 2i. That would be a cheap solution, but sometimes it would work, right? And then can you use a calculator to find arc sine of 2i, but how would you enter 2i, right? Would you write 2 times the square root of negative 1, maybe? Would the calculator accept that? Those are good questions. Anyways, so let's see how we can handle this problem and these kinds of problems. So we're going to consider two things. One of them is cosine of z plus i sine z equals e to the power i z. Again, thanks to Euler, this is a beautiful, beautiful identity. And you need to be Euler to be able to come up with something like this. Okay. And then if you replace z with negative z, Cosine is even, so it's going to absorb, but sine is going to spit out the negative because it's odd. And then here you're going to get e to the power negative iz. And now I want to get sine z, so I would get rid of the cosine. So let's go ahead and negate the second equation and add. In other words, we're subtracting the second one from the first one. Cosine cancels out. We end up with 2i sine z equals e to the iz minus e to the negative iz. And if you, you added these equations directly, you would get the cosine z from there. You get the idea? Uh, so, and now the next step is going to be dividing both sides by 2i. And if you divide by 2i, again, you could go ahead and multiply by negative i or divide by i to, you know, just fix the denominator, but you don't need it in this case. I'll show you why in a little bit, why that's not necessary. But this is basically sine of any angle, including the complex ones, right? So z can be anything. And if you replace z with like pi over six, obviously this should give you sine of 30 degrees, which is supposed to be one half. And you can test it out, right? Definitely that should work for you. All right, great. So let's go ahead and set this equal to what we were given. In our equation, remember, sine z was equal to 2i. And let's go ahead and set this equal to 2i. And then we can totally forget about the sine now because we basically turned a trigonometric equation into an exponential one. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and solve for z from here. Remember, z is a complex number still but we have an exponential equation, which is actually very easy to solve. But why did we not fix the denominator? Because we're about to cross multiply, okay? When we multiply like this, that's called cross multiplication, and 2i times 2i is 4i squared. And you gotta remember, actually, this is something you should never ever forget. i squared is equal to negative one. And that's gonna give us negative four. So e to the iz, minus e to the negative iz equals negative 4 from 4i squared. So far so good? Okay, the next step is changing e to the power negative iz. So what do you know about negative exponents? If you have a to the power negative x, we can write it as 1 over a to the power x. And that's true for complex numbers too. So we can write e to the power negative iz as 1 over e to the power iz and the right hand side is not going to change but this is really cool because if we use substitution then we have the same thing twice reciprocal obviously so if we call this w then we're going to get w minus 1 over w equals negative 4 and that's just awesome 
because we can turn this into a quadratic equation. Why do I say turn? Because this is a rational equation, but we can turn it into a quadratic. How? Multiply everything by W, right? And then if you distribute, you're going to get W squared minus 1 equals negative 4W. Next step, put everything on the same side and come up with a full quadratic. All right, here's a quadratic. Because the sine of A and C are opposite, which means we have real solutions. Wait a minute, isn't the solution going to be complex? Well, real numbers are complex too, but that's not the point. Don't worry, it's going to be nice at the end. So now let's go ahead and solve this equation easy to solve by using the quadratic formula. W equals negative B plus minus square root of B squared, which is 16, minus 4AC, which is plus 4. Uh-oh, that shows us a positive discriminant. I couldn't remember the name. Delta divided by 2A. Such a horrible A. I mean that this notability sometimes does it. I don't know why. I blame it on notability, maybe I should blame it on the Apple Pencil, but anyways, that's the W. If you simplify this a little bit, 16 plus 4 is 20. The square root of 20 is 2 root 5. And we can definitely simplify this, right? Remember, W values are real, and we can divide everything by 2. That's going to give us negative 2 plus minus root 5. Yes, W is real. When I say real, obviously, it's also complex, but you don't need to say complex because it's kind of like the overarching c category. But what we need to do now is to solve for z. What is z? Make sure you keep track of things, right? e to the iz is w. So this is e to the iz. e to the iz is negative 2 plus root 5. Let me just start with one of them because the other one is going to be so similar. You can do it, right? Even if I don't, don't do it. Uh-oh. Come on. So, from here, we're going to go ahead and... It's really weird. Okay, great. So, let me... <laughs> I guess Notability doesn't want me to draw any lines. And I'll make my eraser bigger. Okay, cool. So, this is supposed to be e to the power iz, right? w is e to the power iz. So, let's go ahead and set it equal to that. And how do you solve for z? You can use natural logs. But before that, let's go ahead and write this as root 5 minus 2, because I want to emphasize one thing here, the fact that root two, 5 minus 2 is positive. It's important because when we write this in polar form, we're going to need this modulus. If it's positive, its modulus is going to be itself, because it's a real number, right? Cool. So now we can write this as follows. Root 5 minus 2 is a positive number. Just multiply it by e to the power 2 pi ni, should I write 2 pi i n or 2 pi ni, oopsies, so I'll just use 2 pi ni, and that's equal to e to the iz, and then we're going to go ahead and natural log both sides, and when we do, we're going to get iz equals ln of root 5 minus 2, which is real valued by the way, plus 2 pi ni. And then from here, you just need to divide by i or multiply by negative i. I'll do the second. Uh, and if you m multiply by negative i, this is going to turn into a negative i squared, which is 1. So we're going to get 2 pi n and then minus i times ln root 5 minus 2. Great. So that should give us one of the z values. And the other one is going to be similar. The only difference is, if you think about it, negative 2 minus root 5 is negative, And you kind of have to consider... Or should we just do it? How, how about that? For completeness sake, let's go ahead and do it. Negative root 5 minus 2. And now, to be able to write this, uh, you have to take the absolute value, which makes it positive. But then you need to multiply by negative 1 uh, to get the actual answer. And that will be e to the power i times pi. But pi can also be written as pi plus 2 pi k because of the period. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. It's just going to be slightly different, ln root 5 plus 2 plus i times pi plus 2 pi k. If you replace k with 0, you're going to get the principal value. And of course, uh, you can multiply uh, both sides by negative i again. And that will give us pi plus 2 pi k minus i times 
ln of root 5 plus 2. It's going to be slightly different, but those are going to be the solutions for this equation. And I think I included a solution from Wolfram Alpha. Uh-oh, Wolfram Alpha, too bad. You did not get the actual values, but that's okay. <laughs> anyway, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.